All right, now using this idea of absolute value, we need to simplify these also. Here we have the square root of x plus 4 quantity squared. So absolutely, squaring and square rooting opposite operations, they undo each other. So our answer would be x plus 4. But because this is a variable, and we have to ensure that whatever this is turns out to be positive, we have to use the absolute value bars. So our answer must be the absolute value of x plus 4. It cannot be anything other than that. Now what happens whenever we have the square root of a trinomial? Well, if we were to multiply this one that we just did all out, x plus 4 times x plus 4, wouldn't we get something very similar to this? It would be a trinomial of some sort. So hopefully maybe we could factor this down and get a perfect square. So let's see if we were to do that. Um, if we were to factor this down, 9z squared would be 3z times 3z and 16 hopefully would be 4 and 4. Now if, would that give us our middle term of negative 24z? If we had a positive 12z and a positive 12z, that would give us a positive 24. So we would need to make our signs negative to get a negative 24z. Now we could rewrite this as 3z minus 4 quantity squared because this was a perfect square trinomial. And now we can take the square root. Squaring and square rooting undo each other, so our answer would be 3z minus 4, but because we have a variable, we must use the absolute value bars to ensure that it will be positive, no matter what. All right, now, we're also going to do work with some order of operations. So you have to be sure that you're doing things in the correct order. So we're going to be working with these two problems here that look very similar. Here we're taking the square root of the addition, and here we're doing the addition of the square roots. Looks like it might be the exact same answer, but we must go through order operations before we can tell. Okay, so I said that the square root acts like a grouping symbol. You have, it's almost like a parenthesis. You, as if this were in parentheses underneath that radical. So we would have to add 25 and 144 first. So if I were to add those, 25 plus 144 would give us, what, 169? So this would be 169, and then we would take the square root. Now let's finish that. The square root of 169 would have to be 13. Because if you, if you did 13 squared, you would get 169. So if you had your list of perfect squares in front of you, that's where this will come in handy. Now let's see if we get the exact same answer by doing this next problem. Here we have the square root of 25, which we can do. We can take the principal root of 25, that's just 5. And then we can take the square root of the principal root of 144. That would be 12. Now it says that we're supposed to add those two things. So 5 plus 12 would be 17. Those are not the same problems. We did not get the same answer at all. So order of operations is extremely important. Let's do one more here. Again, we need to work with our radicals first because they're like grouping symbols. So this would be 5, and this literally says 5 times this square root. So 5 times, again, when we're doing square roots of fractions, we can do the top and then the bottom. So the square root of 16 would be 4, and the square root of 25 would be 5. Then we have minus the square root of 144 would be 12. Now again, it's more order of operations. We multiply before we divide. And when we multiply, we can do some canceling here, can't we? Because 5 times um, 4 fifths, if we look at it as just a fraction, would be 4 minus 12 would be negative 8. So watch your order of operations.